how you do that. You do it this way, but this is a way. I picked up an art pad that my sister Deb had brought me, an art pad, a scripture keeper. I started drawing these pictures. Every night I couldn't sleep, I would draw these pictures. When I finished, I had um, 12 pictures, and they were the deepest, darkest secrets of my life. It's real therapeutic. Just because I start off this way doesn't necessarily mean that this is going to be the sculpture that I end up with. Usually, I'd wind up mashing the clay a few more times. Sometimes my sculptures start off sad and they end up happy. They end up with a smile. This church, but I had left out, let's say, when I was in my teen years and I went my own way and I wound up in a lot of situations. I ran away from home. I was a young girl, you know, you hear about the girls now in these abusive relationships. I had a pimp, I wound up a prostitute on the street. Yes, this is a, a cluster of people. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a newborn, uh, unborn child. And they're all leaning, seem like everybody's leaning on the man. Or either, he could be leaning on everyone. This is another favorite of mine. It's a mother and a father, and they're giving their child um, compassion. She's diagnosed with AIDS, and it represents people needing people. I waited for this drug dealer to come out so that I could get my fix. You know, and by then I was injecting in my arms, my neck my temple if I could just to try to not be sick. My mother was in church with my sister Deb and I don't know, I don't remember even walking to church. I just remember being in the back of the church and the Reverend Dr. Taylor, who is my pastor now, he was giving a prayer of invitation, asking if anybody was tired of how they live, they wanted to repent of their sins, they wanted to be forgiven, to come up and give their life to the Lord if they needed a change. And I don't remember my feet taking me up there, but I went up and that was one of the most dynamic things that ever happened to me in my life. I did go back to a detox because my daughters, they said, Mommy, remember you said you wanted to get clean? And they had called a detox and they had a bed for me. And I never looked back since. But a year after that, I was speaking with my pastor. And, um, you know, I was telling him how happy I was. I got delivered from drugs. I got forgiven for all that stuff that had been in my life. And I had this new life. And he listened to me, he talked with me. and. I was like, they tested for what? But I said, well, you shot this. You know, I see the tracks. I know tracks. Uh, I said, well, I do not want anybody to see me go in the health station. That's shame, guilt, stigma, discrimination. And he offered to go with me. I said, no, I don't, I don't want to go. He offered to take me to his doctor. He offered even to take the test with me. Uh, she was positive. And she was very hurt, devastated. And my view was, look, all of us, have something inside of us propelling us. You is HIV, all right? For me, it's just sad, you know, but we, are, we both gonna die because of that. I said, um, I tested positive for HIV. He said, you did, Sister McDonald. And he grabbed me and embraced me and kissed me on my cheek. I never knew of anybody that did that in that area because here in this community, we had seen, you know, because of People not understanding the um, HIV and the stigma and discrimination. People were putting their family members out. People were living on the street. You know, people that you knew. But what it was, the fear made them not be able to cope even with love. The love wasn't strong enough because it was overshadowed by the fear. And he kissed me. And I remember saying, wow. I told him I'm HIV and he kissed me on my cheek. That was when I first started. He first introduced me. It's on the internet, matter of fact. 
And this is when he first introduced me. This was my first art show. This was 1999. I wanted to kind of give her a free commercial. So I said, well, Joyce, come up, talk about your art, talk about what's going on. He had me bring six sculptures up to the sanctuary. And all of a sudden, he introduced me as an artist. And the next thing I knew, I turned, up, turned around and told the whole church that I used to be on drugs and that I was HIV positive. I was a little like, hmm, I don't know. Because I know how this, the guilt, the fear, the shame is not gone. It's been rolled back in this church, but it ain't gone. And I didn't know how it would go over. Now, the whole church was packed. Nobody says they're HIV in this community. And it's like this hush came over the church. The whole church, they started praising God. They started clapping. Each one came, and I just really get emotional when I think of it. Each one came, and they hugged me, and they kissed me. We're talking about hundreds of people, children, the elderly of the church. After a while, I was saying, they're going to give me something, kissing me on my face. And I think um, I'm a person. I study people. I realize it because a lot of the, a lot of different. I, I think people, a person's features. So a lot of times I do work, and then I'll be like, "Oh, that looks like. Well, oh, that reminds me of I like the features of noses." And then I find different things to use as instruments. Whatever's near. <laughs> This happens to be a quarter. This is just a quick sculpture I'm doing right here. It works as a good tool. Uh -huh. This person is looking like they really went through a hard time here. I knew 50 people personally that I know that had died as complications of this disease. A lot of the things that are in these actual pictures, like this particular person, they love airplanes. So that's what their family member chose to do. This person was always into fruit baskets. She loved to get fruit baskets. Each picture tells a story. One of the particular ones that um, I would like to tell is this one with the kente cloth. That's a brother and a sister. He's a reverend, and that was his sister. They died at two different times, but he had a favorite hat that he always wore. So that's what we made this hat and tie out of. And his sister loved now and laters, so that's why we put that there. I always say, my name would go in here if it had to go in the quilt. I also do um, classes. I've done art classes at the shelter with women. When I first came, they really wasn't interested in any clay, you know. And it's just wonderful to see how clay is something so natural and earthly, how people can really go into it, even if they've never done any art. It's something about clay and the, you know, it reminds me how God molds us. He's the potter, how he molds us. <laughs>
told me I contracted HIV in 1985. I didn't get tested until 1995. Empower your children. Educate yourself. Educate your children about HIV. HIV is in this community and every other community.